Thank you very much. It's very good to be here at uh, Lotter. My name is Dex Carrington. And um, I guess you said the one thing that's kind of new in my life right now is I have a beard. Thank you. I can tell you're impressed by that one. The thing that's interesting about having a beard is I get compliments on the beard. People come up to me, they go, hey, nice beard. Which is strange because all I really did was stop shaving. <laughs> that is my accomplishment. Stopping shaving is the one thing you can stop doing in terms of personal hygiene and people give you compliments. It doesn't work with the others. You stop showering, people don't go, hey, cool smell. Stop cutting your fingernails, hey, sweet claws. Stop getting dressed in the morning, hey, nice penis. Unless you have a very nice penis. But the one thing I've noticed uh, is that, you know, it's summer now. That's, that's one thing I've noticed. I'm good at noticing things. But anyway, it's summer, people are wearing less clothing, and it occurs to me that so many people have tattoos. Now I'm 32 years old, I don't have any tattoos, maybe because I could never commit. But what amazes me with so many people having tattoos is when religious people get tattoos. People who believe in God. Because it's like saying to God, Listen, I appreciate what you tried to do here in creating me, but you forgot to put the Japanese symbol for courage on my arm. <laughs> How could you ever believe in a god who forgot to put your favorite quote from when you were 19 on your forearm? Getting tattoos of quotes really amazes me. I saw one that said, Follow your heart. Really? Is that the same heart that told you to get that tattoo? Because if so, it might not be the most accurate compass for making life decisions. I saw another one that said, I am enough the way I am. <laughs> then why did you need the tattoo? By getting the tattoo, you've disproved the quote. It means nothing now. And my favorite one of all time was a tattoo I saw that said, Never forget who you are. <laughs> Wouldn't it be easier to just tattoo your name? <laughs> if you one day do forget who you are, that is the least helpful tattoo of all time. Just reminding you how epically you failed as a human being. I read a study that like one in three of my generation is gonna die with Alzheimer's. Pretty big chance. This guy's gonna get Alzheimer's. Just sitting in the old folks' home every five minutes forgetting who he is and having to look down at his arm and be like, oh shit. <laughs> the one thing I wasn't supposed to do. Isn't that depressing? But anyway, uh, what's, uh, what's also new in my life is I'm single now. But uh, I can't be on Tinder. Can't do Tinder, can't handle it. And here's the reason why. My generation, if we ask our parents, Hey Dad, how'd you meet Mom? There's usually a good story then. Our eyes met across the crowded dance hall. <laughs> then I turned to my friend Timmy and I said, I'm gonna marry that girl. <laughs> then I asked her to dance, but she was engaged to Neil. And then three months later, there's a story. But this next generation, every story's gonna be the same. Hey Dad, how'd you meet Mom? Well, like, I saw her face. <laughs> and then I swipe right. And then I sent her a Snapchat of my dick. And then we were again. But seriously, with all the social media going on, it's just getting way too intense for me to even understand what's happening anymore. I was on Instagram today, and someone post they posted a picture of food they'd ordered at a restaurant. What is the accomplishment here? <laughs> Look what I did, I ordered it myself. <laughs> this has gotta be a new phenomenon. I mean, before Instagram, people got their food at a restaurant, they didn't pick up the plate and walk around and be like, everyone, look at this! <laughs> look what I did! Do you like me? Who would like to comment on this? <laughs> but when you break it down, Instagram's all about one thing. Selfies. Now why do we take selfies? Why do we think we're so fabulous and amazing that we should be taking pictures 
of ourselves. Just, oh yeah, me. Oh, so good. Why is that? Personally, I think it's because the average Instagram user has a hundred followers. Jesus Christ had 12. So the average person is sitting at home going, I'm 10 times more amazing than Jesus. People need to see my face instantly. But when you think about it, a selfie is insane. If you go back just 15 years to the year 2000, a selfie is the equivalent of walking up to people on the street with a picture of yourself going, please look at this picture of my face and answer three questions. Number one, do you like this photo of my face? Number two, would you like to comment on my appearance? And number three, would you like to follow me? I'm going that way. So if you're about to take a selfie at any point and you're wondering whether or not it's the right thing to do, just ask yourself, what would Jesus do? The thing that really scares me about the society we live in is that the most valuable currency on earth, more so than love or friendship or gold or diamonds or euros or dollars, is this. Likes. We love likes. People hashtag their photos, like for a like. You like me, I like you. Which is like saying, I'll give you ten dollars, you give me ten dollars. Then we've accomplished nothing. No, no. Then people will see that you gave me ten dollars. And people will see that I gave you ten dollars. See, we don't do this for us. We do it for them. And there's so many words now with social media that we should not at all be using that are just part of everyday vocabulary. Like I was face raped not too long ago. Anyone here been face raped? That's like half the audience, yes. Again, imagine this scenario 15 years ago before face Facebook. So I was face raped recently. Anyone here been face raped? Half the audience, yes, yes. It's a lot of face raping going on, definitely. I mean, face rape has got to be the most intense word ever created for the most innocent thing you could ever do. I like Mary. He doesn't actually like Mary. I'm face raping him. <laughs> but the scariest thing about the word face rape is that eventually it'll just be called rape. Because that's what kids do, they shorten things. What is up? What's up? Sup. <laughs> Facebook rape. Face rape. Rape. In the UK, they say freaked. They're one letter off. They're one letter off a world in which it's totally normal to hear this. Oh my god, did you hear Timmy was raped? It was hilarious. <laughs> Terry did it, he's so good at raping. Out of all the rapists I know, he's certainly the best. That's a messed up world. Imagine living in that kind of a society. Someone actually gets raped, they come to you crying like, Oh my god, it was awful. Uh, actually, I've been raped like five times before. <laughs> and I handled it way better than you. That's messed up. But just the word face rape on its own is so intense. I would say that for most people over the age of, I don't know, 60-ish, face rape means rape in your face. <laughs> and I have 13 year old girls coming home from school. Hey honey, how was your day? Ah, uh, whatever, I was like, face rape, like, that's traumatic shit. <laughs> Gotta calm down on the word, that's all I'm saying. And then there's Snapchat. And Snapchat is all about your Snapchat story. Gotta post your story on Snapchat. Snapchat wants your story. <laughs> to me, the best part about life is telling a good story. Something cool happens, you meet your friends the next day. Oh my God, they'll never guess what happened last night. So me and Terry went to the bar. Then we met Andrew and he had some ecstasy. Fast forward 15 minutes to the end of the story. So anyway, the next time somebody hands me a loaded gun and five grams of cocaine, I'm gonna say, no thanks. <laughs> And it's a good time. But now with Snapchat story, it's like, oh my god, you'll never guess what happened last night. Yeah, I already know. We saw your story. <laughs> well, what did you do last night? You already know. You follow my story. <laughs> did you hear what happened to Eric? Yes, I follow his story. <laughs> so now we all have nothing to talk about. So what do we end up talking about? We end up talking about more social media. 
I was on the bus, and I heard two 17-year-olds talking. The one kid says to the other kid, so anyway, then I slide right on her face, but before we could start chatting on Tinder, she already added me on Snapchat, but I'd already added her on Facebook, so we start chatting on Facebook Messenger. It was a really good chat, so I put on my Facebook status, like, best chat ever, but then she took a screenshot of it and sent it to me on Snapchat and wrote, OMG, dolphin emoji, and then I went on Twitter, and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the whole story here is that there was once two people, and they never met each other. That's the whole story. And there's so many things with social media that we don't think about at all. But join me for a little thought experiment, if you will. So, Snapchat. Tens of millions of photos being sent every day. A lot of those photos, naked photos, sexting. A lot of those people, under the age of 16. Now, it says on the terms and conditions of Snapchat, we store all photos temporarily so that we may provide our service. Which means that at any given time, Snapchat has on its servers the world's largest collection of child pornography. How is this legal? How is no one going to jail? But I guess their excuse is, oh no, no, we don't look at it. We just store it. Which is like saying, yes officer, I do have 700 kilos of cocaine in my basement, but I'm not using it. I'm just storing it temporarily. So that I may provide my search. <laughs> and then there's blogs. Oh yes, we're moving on to blogs. I'm not talking about blogs that are about something, like travel or Cadillacs or, you know, plants. But just blogs where people write about themselves. Just me. People need to know about my totally uninteresting life. With blog posts like, today I had a coffee with my friend Vivian, then I wore this outfit, and then I saw a kitten and it felt weird. <laughs> How insanely narcissistic is this? But we don't think about it because it's all over the place. But just to put it in perspective, imagine it's 1995, and a friend of yours comes to you and says, there should be a newspaper where every story is about me. <laughs> you wanna know why it's called the blog? Because the first person who heard that idea went BOOM! <laughs> and threw up in their mouth a little. But with all this, with all this technology, we think there's progress. We think things are going nothing but uphill. But I think it's the exact opposite. I think it's regression. Because of one thing and one thing only. Emojis. You know those fucking little pictures that people send each other? And you hear people talking and be like, Oh my god, I sent him rainbow party hat monkey face? And all he sent me back was dolphin monkey face. What the hell are you talking about? We spent 4,000 years inventing the alphabet and now we're going back to using kitty man paintings? So, I'm starting an anti-social media campaign. When you get home tonight, check out the Facebook page. But for the love of God, don't like it.